All right, viewers, we are back again with the Auto Watch series. So let's get our hairspring through the regulator. And since we've gotten it out, should be a little bit easier to put it back in than get it out. I'll try and grab it with my tweezers and try and get it in. Oh, that was quick. Okay. Anyway, so one one convenient thing I've just kind of realized that I've been filming here. I did that whole thing you saw just now down through the camera. I'm not actually watching what I'm doing. Maybe that's a dumb thing to do. <laughs> but, but, you know, usually with these things, you're not looking through a camera. Now that I've got the light really close to the hairspring, you can see some of the other debris on. I hope... I hope this all here did not come from me putting the thing in alcohol. Oh my goodness. Viewers, viewers, viewers. Ah. Well, you know what? Next time we do one of these things, I'm just leaving it alone. I'm not playing this game of who wants to wreck the hairspring first or something like that. I think it should be fine, though. Um, I'll make an update video if it's not. Okay, so there's the offset, or not the offset bend, the end, the end bend, the bend at the end, which needs to be pushed in through that stud there. Let's try and get it in. Did I actually get that thing? No, I didn't. All right, okay. All right, how am I going to do this? I'm just kind of moving the wheel forward a little bit. I'm trying to push her in there. I don't know, this kind of, it's kind of being a little bit difficult, you guys. I might have to skip this part, too. Okay, viewers, to say the least, that was weird. I'm not sure who pinned this hairspring or what, but I think they did it flat out wrong originally. The best I could get this thing to look like is like this, and otherwise it would just bind up in the regulator. And of course, when that happens, the whole thing's being bent out of shape, so that's great. Originally, I said that I didn't believe that this watch had ever been messed with. Well, I think that belief has kind of changed here a little bit. Because the thing has just been pinned so weird. The hairspring was above, or the taper pin was above the hairspring. And, uh... <laughs> and, and I don't know what the heck happened. I don't know. I'm going to try a fun little experiment here and see if it'll run well like this. I want to, you know, I think it'd, it'd at least be worth testing anyway. Oh, what the heck happened here? I'm overbanked there for a second. So I'm just going to leave that alone and we're going to see where it goes from there. You may notice that the balance wheel and hairspring otherwise are just out of beat. As you can see, the spoke is not lined up with the pallet fork and that is not a good thing. As you can see, it kind of the resting position is moving over to the side. So what we do in this situation is we look for the the slot in the collet and the collet holds the hairspring to the balance staff here. You can see it in there, that round piece of brass in there. See that, there's the slot. We can stick a very small, very thin pin in there and adjust this thing, adjust the position of it. And I, I'm going to use my oiler for that, but first I'm going to wipe it off to make sure there's no excess oil on it. I'm going to try and film this as best as I can, although I don't know how great that's going to be. It's going to look like I'm sticking it in. And that's all you're going to really see of it. I'm going to look for the slot, looking for the slot. It's kind of binding up there. Okay, there it is, I think. you got to be careful with this thing. You don't want to just jam it in there and and screw up the spring. You know what, viewers, I can't actually see it right now. That is unfortunate. All right, there we go, viewers. Now you don't have to really screw around. Once you get to this stage, you don't really have to screw around with um, head magnifiers and stuff as much anymore. I think that's um, in beat, basically. It might be a little bit swinging to the right, but that's not, that's nothing serious. So, yeah, I want to see how well this will run. We'll conduct a bit of an experiment. And as you may or may not know, I'm doing a series on hairspring rebending and experimental stuff on this channel here anyway, right now. So I'm going to push them to their limits.
I've, I've been watching a lot of um, wristwatch YouTubers recently, wristwatch repairs, and I'm just looking at my workbench compared to theirs, and you get paint stains all over this stuff. <laughs> I, I really do look like some guy in his basement. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, yeah, but a free table, though. I can't complain. So anyway, there's our spring barrel. Uh, we're going to take our main spring, and you just hook it around. And try not to deform it while you're getting it in there. Hook it around the hook on there. And I actually got to do it. Sometimes they play hard to get. I, I find that interesting that you can't do this with a lot of, uh, well, pocket watches, I think you can, well, can you? I don't know, I think you can manually wind in a spring like this, but wrist watches, oh no, they'll, I don't know, the spring will get all deformed or something. Um, so that's not the, that's not what you can do with those guys, but you can get away with that here, and I think most pocket watches will allow you to manually wind the spring. Mainspring winders are expensive. You have to buy a whole set of those um, for this, scale of, well, I guess all mainspring winders, even one for clocks are expensive, that's not the point. Let's see here. Get that in there. Yeah, basically I'm doing it like this. I could have worn gloves or finger cots, although I don't have finger cots and gloves get, well, both of them actually get kind of caught in the spring as you're winding it in. But anyway, there it is. So this, this is in really nice shape. I'm going to stick a little bit of oil in this. Make sure to wipe off my oiler here. So I think I'll just drop a dab in here. Drop a dab in here. And drop a dab here. And I'm gonna drop a little bit on the base of this, or on the on the bottom of the barrel there. And that may or may not be a little bit much on the oil department, but uh, whatever, I think we'll be okay there. Then I'm going to oil the center of this, of the spring barrel. Get a little bit, just a tiny, tiny amount in there. There we go. Just so there's no friction. Because that's what we're eliminating here, right, viewers? Anyways, so just stick our, I don't know what this is called, the center of the spring barrel, the winder, I guess. Some kind of winder of some sort. And now, I want to hook, I may, make sure that's hooked in. Basically grabbing this and spinning it around. Oh, I guess it's not even gripping. <laughs> okay, grabbing this. Actually, I don't have to do. I'm gonna be smart here. Check this out. I'm gonna put that wheel on, spin it around, and get it hooked on that way. Come on, you can do it. Oh, it's close. It's so close. There we go. Wow, what a. What a genius moment there. And because it looks like there's a tiny little wear line at the center of the, well, that's not quite how I want to do that. There's a tiny little wear line here, so I'm just gonna put a small dab of oil there and make sure that has no friction because that's that's why we're oiling this stuff to begin with. So I'm gonna stick that in there. Oh, you know what, maybe I should put this wheel on first. I think we'll do that. So I'm going to put another dab of oil on here. You can see another little wear line there. And uh, I don't know which side looks nicer. Just use that one. There we go. So that just sticks in there. And now we can flip the this around, the this, flip that around. And stick the spring barrel in. And try and line it up with that square hole there. Until it snaps through. There we go. Went through. Oh, but I've got oil in my hands now because I've just put my hand in the barrel. Well, what can you do, viewers? That's what happens when you put your hand in the barrel. And if you've done so already, take these two screws back out. These being this one here and that one there. And I mean all the way out. I just kind of had them in for support, you know? We'll put them there because we're going to need them in a second. And we're going to grab our barrel cover, which looks okay, I, I think. Anything coming off there? No. Looks a little grimy. Doesn't feel grimy, though. It just kind of looks it. This is actually really interesting. They've stamped the West Clock Canada 
limited uh, on there a different way for some reason. I'm not really sure why. I use my magnetic screwdriver just to kind of start it in there and then grab my other actual one that fits the, the uh, slot and tighten her on there like that. Not the most interesting shots I've ever done, but anyway. And viewers, I've completely forgotten to oil the keyless works. Not that it needed a whole bunch, but I'm just going to stick my oiler down into here and just dab it just a little bit. Isn't this so perfect for the phone light viewers? Okay, there we go. That's probably that's that's already enough. And I think the uh, set the fork right there uh, that grabs the stem and crown. I think these get worn on this particular style of movement. Not sure how much wear is usually found on pocket watches when it comes to keyless works, is plural, but. Uh, I don't know, some of these aren't that tight, and they kind of flip-flop around a little bit, so when I, st when I stick the crown in, I'm going to put some oil on the stem of it. I'm going to put the crown in quite yet. Well, I'm going to put it in, but I'm not going to keep it in there. I'm just going to wind this guy up, see how he performs. First turn, second turn, third turn, and we're already on the move. That's a great sign. Fourth turn, fifth turn, six, seven... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, yes, I'm going to count it all out, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, so about 21 turn, oh, almost 22, we've got a ticking watch movement here. So that's great. So, and this is without oil. We haven't oiled this guy yet. Uh, don't worry. I, I know I've been skipping a lot of the hairspring and balance wheel stuff because that's, I don't have the right camera equipment for that to film that because that is like really, really small. And we're just going to oil the pivots. So where should we start? We'll start this way. I'll crank it up like that. There we go. Yeah, that's fairly good amplitude on there with no oil. So, where's our, should we, I don't know, I don't know if I use the oiler or the needle or what. I don't know, this thing kind of just sprays oil all over everything. In the past, I've used a plastic oiling container, but now I'm going to use this After Eights um, tin here, the 50th anniversary tin, as my oiling tin, because the plastic ones aren't really reusable. They hold in a bunch of old oil. Or at least the milk caps. I mean, the plastic ones. I should be more specific here. I'm, I was literally using milk caps, like off a milk jug, which are great size-wise, but you can't really reuse them after that. So that's not great. Reuse them for the sense of oiling anyway. So I think these metal ones are a little easier to clean because I had issues trying to clean those. And there's our first pivot done. I know I kind of dabbed it on there a little bit. Second pivot. Uh, okay, let's get another little dab of that. Okay, that's a little bit much. I'm going to try and get that off there. So we'll leave that there for now. Grab another dab of it. Oiling pivots is interesting. <laughs> you have this happen to you quite a lot. Um, I might give these just a second to run because the oil tends to get sucked in there if it's running. So, I think the amplitude will probably pick up here at some point, or something will happen to indicate that's like, oh yeah, I have oil now, so I'm just going to run better. And I just, that was terrible. I just dabbed, I completely missed. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, professional clock repair genius here. Back again for another slam dunk of an upload. Anyway, so we're just going to get this pivot here. It's already wet. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, we're just going to leave that. Well, I'll leave it in the sense of let it get kind of pulled in there. Oh, my goodness. Keep doing it. Did I just do it again? Oh, no, I don't. Or I didn't. Okay, we're going to try and oil the center arbor. These watches really enjoy having the center arbor oiled because usually the amplitude will pick up from my experience after oiling that. 
There seems to be a high friction area. And of course, oil the spring barrel, or oil the, the actual pivot there. And this one may be a little, this one isn't really moving that, that fast, so it takes a second for the oil to get kind of drawn in. Um, I, don't rely too much on that though, as in oil getting drawn in to where you want it, because chances are it usually won't. But sometimes when the movement is running and you happen to slightly kind of do what I did, you may have some actually pretty okay results still because the thing's going and the wheels are turning. So you've just dabbed oil right on top of a moving wheel. So, okay, so this is all good on this side. And we're going to oil all the guys on the front. Well, not all of them, but we're going to oil this I'm going to oil it on this side now. So. Oh, I think it slowly, I think it slowed down ever so slightly there. Okay. Got that there going. Yeah, I know the watch pivots are hard to oil. And yeah, that is too much for that right now. Let's see if that gets drawn in there or not. Usually these clocks and watches, oil actually takes a few minutes, or actually a few hours to soak in from what I've seen. Sometimes performance will increase after hours of running it, after being first oiled again. And this thing hasn't been oiled since 64, so. Okay, there we go. I'm going to dab a little bit down here somewhere. Actually, maybe not. I'm just going to dab some there right now. Because these wheels here, I mean, these are all riveted to the front plate, but they still need something. Keep them going. Get that in there. Get that up in here. I'm going to oil up top here. that spins a lot and there's wear there from what I've seen before. Not that this will have to be like quote unquote rebushed or whatever, but I'm just saying, you know, that there's a lot happening over there. So I'm going to make sure things are working okay. And as for this, I don't know if there's anywhere else that really needs it that much other than this rivet here. Try and get some behind this or in the pivot of that wheel there and one other big area I found that you need to oil is every second tooth of the escape wheel so we're gonna stop this and I need to put just a tiny tiny little mark on this thing with um, I'm gonna use a sharpie this time around because I need to know how many times the wheel has has spun or if it's spun or whatever There we go, there's our mark there. I'm gonna wait for that to come around. See that line there? There's our great artistry there. So anyway, let's oil one tooth. Second tooth. Try and get it not on the sides, but on the actual front of the tooth there. Third, well not third, but fourth. Skip the fifth, you get the idea. Fifth, and then number six here. I think I might have slightly miscalculated there. Greg does not account to seven here. Also, I'm kind of more worried about dabbing the oil all over the sides of this thing. Um, I want to get the front, not the side. Oil keeps pooling over there, so. Not sure if that's the greatest job I've ever performed because it's not supposed to be showing off like that. Get a new um, Q tip. That one's kind of grimy. Yeah, that's too much there. But it should work a little better now, I think. There we go. I think the amplitude just picked up. Uh huh. Just 
to dry it off a little bit. And by doing this, the actual pin pallets themselves, which everyone seems to hate for no reason, uh, because, oh, they're cheaper and they're no jewels. Guys, I only collect Rolexes. Anyway, if you do it like I did, or if you, you know, I don't know. I, I thought that was okay. I don't know if that was the greatest. I could have done that a little neater, but anyway, I think it's oiled now. And that's why this whole plate area here is exposed, so you can do that. And they say dollar watches aren't serviceable. If they weren't serviceable, or weren't intended to be serviced, they wouldn't have these big open areas like that. I mean, sure, for manufacturing's sake, they need to get in there and oil it for the first time. But it's not like that hole's going to close up. I mean, you can do it again. It's not like it's going to disappear or something. The entire purpose for that area being open is so you can get in there and actually oil the teeth of that. And, and that's not just a random um, coincidence either, because the, the actual pallets are on this side of the wheel not on this side where it's closed. So yeah, this is the actual open side that you're supposed to do that from. And you don't need to do it on the other side because as I, well, as I've kind of implied, there are no pins on the other side of this. That is really decent motion right there. So what we're going to do is, well, up next, <laughs> on the Gregola, uh, whatever the heck it's called. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna oil the impulse pin. I hope you can actually see it there better. I'm just gonna get that pin there. Little drop of, oh my gosh. Of course I oil the balance wheel. Why wouldn't I oil the balance wheel? Okay, let's try that again. Uh, where's the impulse pin at? I've completely lost it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's kind of hard to, well, it's sort of hard to see. Not much though. Okay, we're gonna leave it like that. Call her a day. We dabbed it with oil, hit the pin, and now it's actually running a lot quieter. It's still going. I always enjoy that when you first get one of these going and you've just oiled it and it actually runs quiet. And then later the sound will come back. Um, I'm not really entirely sure why that is. It's not all the oil leaving the watch or clock, but yeah, usually they'll run quieter. One thing I've just remembered um, kind of too little too late is the crown, or not the crown, this balance cup here Usually when you're installing the balance wheel, which I know we did a while ago, uh, usually these things are tightened all the way up and then loosened to one quarter of a turn. Uh, that is the um, balance cup standard, I think, at least that West Clock recommended anyway. You know, you install it and then you have this cup really loose and then you, you know, you're ready to leave it in there and then you tighten it and then you tighten it till the balance won't move at all. And then you just loosen up a quarter of a turn and then it'll you know be really nice and stable i'm tempted to leave it as it is i didn't do that i just kind of turned it wherever and it's running fine although there is a little bit of play in it which isn't a bad thing it's not like it, it's not like it's not supposed to have any play at all because it is i don't know um there's the old logic uh there's the old, well not the old well i guess the old saying fix it till it's broken you know what that seems quite tight as it is. And that might fix my play problem right there. Oh, it wasn't really a problem, but anyway. I don't know, we could at least do this till it stops, I guess. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't really have much of a desire to screw around with that. I think it's pretty okay. That pliers method still needs a bit of revision. I've kind of scratched the cup just a little bit. I skipped putting the dial on, well, skip showing you anyway, because there's not some great method I've got for that. The most optimal method, as I said before, would just somehow bend the dial tab in a shape where they can just snap on and not have to be messed with all the time. But I don't really know how to do that, so I'm just kind of got it on there like so and just hoping that it won't snap off in the future. I'm not going to be in here every single day, so. And if it gets to a point like, let's say, the hairspring or it doesn't perform right or something, then I'll put on a tester dial on hands like I have for my other test subject. Start crown or stem and crown, which I, this is really weird. I reached up here thinking the it'd be up here, but no. <laughs> of course, most people would think that. Anyway, so this button, you pull this out and you stick the crown in. There you go. It should snap down on here and you can set the hands like so. And I didn't really show that, but you get the idea. 
There we go. They're all lined up right, I think. Um, yeah, that's good. That is just fine. Like I said, you use the button to take the hands out again. Or take, not the hand, the crown. There we go. And uh, now I've reinstalled the two little case springs that hold it in the case. Okay, viewers, now for the moment of truth, we've got our case handy. There's no dirt in it. It's clean enough. Clean enough being there's no dirt in it. You get the idea. We stick our movement in upside down. Well, not upside down for this, but upside down for it, literally everything that isn't this. And Kate, getting these things in here is kind of a newt sometimes. They don't, I don't know, they got, you got tabs to where you get a dial tab up there. Or not a dial tab, wow, I'm so off. There we go. You got these tabs you got to line up in here. And now, tighten the screws so these springs hold it in. There we go. She's in. And now we take our crown, stick it in. What the heck am I doing here? Okay. Oh, let's see if this is not doing anything. Or it's not accepting it. Come on. We're going to put a little bit more oil on this guy. Because it's rolling around in there. Stick our oiler there. There we go. That probably might even be a bit much oil in itself. There we go. That is more or less it done. Well, except for that one more, one more final little thing is putting the crown or the keyless works screw here, which is one of the first things we took off, this big chunky screw. Take this guy, stick him in there. And this is to prevent this button and stuff from being screwed around with for now. So it's like a safety thing. And there it is. Oh no, is the hand rubbing up against the, the plastic? I think it is. Okay, well, I'll have to do it again, but you get the idea. Make sure the hand is kind of down a little bit. It's kind of flip-flopping around there. I've just tested the hand alignment and it's good. And there's one more thing I'm gonna do here. As I mentioned, the keyless works in these things have an aneurysm all the time, it seems. And I know I oiled the stem and crown, but I've got a perfect little access hole to just dab a little bit of oil in there. I know this thing doesn't need much, but just, just to prevent this thing from suffering any sort of wear that doesn't need to suffer. There we go. That's probably enough. I, that, that probably wasn't even necessary, but still, it's like, I don't want this. I, you know, I mean, this is, a, this is an act of um, preservation here. Oh, I was about to say, where's the screw? Uh, this, this is an act of, well, you know, I want to run these things, and, and I want to actually have them for a long time and not be the guy to come in here and screw it up. So anyways, viewers, we will see if this runs accurately. Maybe it won't, maybe it will. And I know, viewers, this, this looks absolutely hideous back here. This is, this is probably not my finest hour here. Kind of poor workmanship, I admit. But, uh, hey, you know what? At least there's a magnet on there at all. And plus, it was pretty ugly anyway. Just to, you know, the back isn't... I mean, there's that mess of glue there and all that fun jazz. So, that's cute. So, anyways, viewers, we will see where this goes. And I will see you in the next part if there is one.